day off. I Rapstein of Linden Associates with your financial market wrap up for this Monday, the 25th of November, 2019. You know, I always tie November 25th to Thanksgiving. I don't know why, but it's not. It's going to be Thursday, as you already know. But the market's giving you a Thursday gift. It rallied like mad today. Markets, in some cases, hitting new all-time highs. And in some instances, what it's doing is it's questioning whether or not that lost embedded slow stochastic reading that I normally goes back and means market and price try to come together isn't happening in the S&P and the Dow. It did happen already, by the way, in the NASDAQ. It went down there Friday in reverse course. Silver and gold, well, traders are saying, you know, if you've got a stable economy or if the stock market's going up, why do you want to own gold that doesn't pay anything? That's hurting that market. When we look at the S&P for the week, obviously, it's the first day of it, we're up 21 points. And as you can see, at 31.3270, that's a new all-time high close. So let's cheer it on. That is big. When we take a look at how the action went, you can see how the market's challenging this past high. And that high on the chart, if we come there, I want to come right to it, was 31.3250. So I want you to remember that number because you went through it today. Very important in my opinion. It also has a pattern now of higher lows, higher highs. Now, when you came in on Friday, you didn't have that exactly. Well, I could argue on the daily chart you did have it uh, with the beginning of a rever reversal on Friday. You had more or less an inside day. You would have had lower highs and higher low, not a complete trend. Today, when you took out this number right through here, that high going back right to this day, which was 31.1450, that gave you the pattern higher highs, higher lows, and what knocks out the market is making a new high through that high. And the reason we'll get to when we take a look at the slow stochastics. In terms of the market reaching back towards the 18-day average, I don't think that happened. Yes, you had a break, and we'll get into that, but it didn't get to that number. Now the resistance is 3140, let's call it 3140 even, right at the upper Bollinger Band. If the market were to come back through Friday's lows, that would create one of those patterns of a higher high, lower low. That wouldn't be a trend, and it wouldn't be a downtrend either. But that's the number that would actually do some damage to the chart. And as I said, if we come back here, when you lose the embedded reading, which you didn't do there, you lost it last Thursday, it normally infers that price and the 18-day average, or the closest moving average, in this case, these are further down, that's the 100 and the 200-day, there's the 18, are going to make a run at each other. That was Thursday's action. Friday, you made a break, and you got as low as 3104. That's too far away from 30, let's call it 89. And that means to me that where the pros would have stops are over that last high, and you took that out today. I'm not saying you can't go dramatically higher, but the Bollinger Band's waiting for the market a little bit up there. And now you're in overbought territory again. So trend reinstated in an overbought phase where the upper resistance is 3140. In the NASDAQ, unlike what happened here, if we come back to Friday's action, you went down on Friday to a low of 82.33. Now, here's the same thing. You have an embedded reading. You lose that reading not on Wednesday, but on Thursday, right here. On Friday, the next day, you go down, clear that 18-day average, come back, and today you're gone. But that was the part I was looking for. It didn't happen in the S&P, and this market's also running through the highs at this point. Then we get to the Dow, and it's more like the S&P. The market's right through here, losing on Thursday its embedded reading. On Friday, it doesn't regain it. And now the market today, as you can see, just moves up. Now, has this one made a new high? No. So the NASDAQ succeeded, the S&P is a failure, and you'd have to get in this market over the 28,128 level to knock out the probability. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good probability of price and the 18-day average coming together before that occurs. It's a contra trend trade, not something that is for everybody out there, and I'm not making the trade recommendation. I'm pointing out what often happens. 
the Russell, boom, bang, comes alive. Look at how this market just went through everything finally. Now it is over the upper Bollinger Band. You only stay over that number 5% of the time. However, I'm gonna back off here. You had a certain amount of this sideways action. Certain amounts not phenomenal. I'd like to see it of churning more, but the market is out of the area of a downtrend. Remember, you had the pattern of lower highs, lower lows. You were under the 18-day average, even on Friday. You knocked that completely out. Are we trending? No, but we're at all-time highs. You don't have to be blind to say, okay, the market's in an uptrend, but the swing line isn't. It's got a lower low, higher high pattern. The market is not overbought. It's moved up, and now everybody underneath this pattern is with a loss because the market's now just about at all-time highs for that move. In the VIX, today's low was 11.73. I think the pros were writing puts today. I know you're going to say he's nuts, but I think they were writing puts at the 1187 level, right at that uh, lower Bollinger Band. The market finished about there. I think the pros are going to look right here for the 1265 level. It has been a trade in the past that when you go to the lower Bollinger Band, let's see if I can find one here, the market has a tendency to come back to the 18-day average. I have repeatedly said it's very different to write a put at the 12 level, let's call it, than it is writing a call at the 14 level that can pop on you. I'm not saying you can't go lower. I'm telling you what I think the pros did today. Are we trending? No. You have a higher, high, lower, low pattern. What else? You had a big Monday up in front of a holiday. Is that gonna be get? A Tuesday reversal is as often the case. We'll find out tomorrow. In T-bonds, even with the stock market rallying today, and this was pretty fascinating to me, you know, normally you get that risk on environment and yields go up. Nah, the market was up 6.30 seconds, higher lows, higher highs. It's running at the 100-day average of closes. I think that's crystal clear to see. And you break the uptrend if you take out 159.13. If you don't take out this high, you could end up with lower highs, lower and low, break that pattern. I'm not saying that's what's gonna happen. I'm saying the market's overbought, fighting a battle now for about a week, right at that 100-day average. Should it wanna rally, the market 161.21 is the upper Bollinger Band's resistance. In the 10-year notes, the opposite. Now, I wanna come back to this. Notice how you never fell back here to the 18. You stayed on bonds at the 100. It's different in the 10-year. The 10-year fell back to the 18-day average. It missed it by a tick, So, I'll, but I'm gonna say it fell back to it. It missed it by one tick and gave you a small reversal. It too's overbought in an uptrend. Unlike the bonds, the resistance is the 100-day average of closes in green. If you clear all this, you might be going to 130.10. Unlike the bonds, you'd have to take out 138.10. 128.31, I'm sorry. That would break the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. TLT, very similar to what's going on here in the sense that the 100-day average has been acting first as a small resistance, then the support, just sort of hanging, overbought. Resistance, 142.11, take out 139.12. You might turn this market into what? At that point with today's high, you could have lower highs, lower lows if you don't first take out 140.60. In the dollar index, trend up and notice the area of the market held. The combination of the 100-day average and the 18, you actually turned the trend pretty solidly to the upside on Friday and today was just follow through. I am, not me, the chart is very overbought. I shouldn't have said I am. I see the chart is very overbought. Uh, 98.53 resistance, support back at 97.84, down to 97.65. You don't want to take out 97.62 if you want this pattern to hold, but look at how overbought you are. Euro currency, no trend. You've got the pattern of a higher high, lower low. If the market keeps falling, a potential support is the 109.85 zone, resistance the 18-day average 108.24, and you are in oversold territory. 
British pound is fighting at the 18-day average of closes. Now, on Friday, the market was in a downtrend, and I think the pros were selling today against that 18-day average. But they shouldn't be too comfortable going home because what the market did is, while it kept the pattern of lower highs, lower lows, the close over the 18-day average means that the market's got upside bias. So what we've done is we stopped the downside momentum you had on Friday. You see it there in the market falling. Didn't quite reach to the lower Bollinger Band and it came back to neutral territory. That's where I'm seeing the chart at the end of the day. In the Japanese yen, the pattern is one of higher and lows. And if we come back and look at the highs, let's go to this high right here. That high is 92.54 and a half. We then come back, we start a rally, and as you'll see, the market gets to 92.47, then turns back down from there. So I have higher lows, lower highs. That's why it's often important to look at that. Bias down and momentum pointing down. I don't have a trend there. In Bitcoin, markets that stretch out under Bollinger Bands have a tendency to come back, as you know, and I, I tell you about this all the time, and try to get back over them. You were under that number on Friday. On uh, This number was 75.80, and the market was under the lower Bollinger Band there on Thursday. So we had two days in a row under. Today, even though you washed out to 6,500, you made a run late in the day, and the market has still got the third day under the Bollinger Band. What about the slow stochastics? They're embedded. So now you've taken a market that's locked in this downtrend. Uh, the market has given up all that gain that it made back over to 10,000 level in no time at all. And again, people are saying, what's the purpose of Bitcoins? In the Brent versus WTI crude, See how the market keeps hanging here and supporting itself against that 18-day moving average of closes. The pattern is up, which means the differential between Brent and WTI has been widening again. We see in the Brent how the market stalled out last Thursday and Friday at the upper Bollinger Band and pulled back. Are we trending? No. What you've got is a lower and low, higher high pattern. You're just sort of spinning around in here. The uh, combination of the 100-day average and the lower Bollinger Band looks to me, if you were to break down hard, could be support. But the main support's the 18-day average, and that number was hit a number of times, and you just seem to swing around it right now. Same thing's true of WTI. First, my eye catches that I'm overbought as can be in the market. Then I see that you got the lower and low, higher high. You stopped at the upper Bollinger Band pulling back. Support could be right here at the 66, uh, what is that, 56.93 level. I think traders would hope to get WTI to that. And again, I'm going to look for the support in these two areas, the 100-day and the 18. Gasoline market, lower and low, higher high. I, in other words, it, the market's almost forcing you buy a hard break under all the support and try to play here to the upper Bollinger Band. That's a fool's play. It works sometimes, but most of the time it doesn't. Then in the nat gas, nat gas remains in its bearish stage. It's got lower highs, lower lows, plenty of natural gas out there. We have four winter storms coming through. I don't know that. Everybody knows that. It's been on the national news. And the market down today, 12 cents. And we know the Chicago area is going to be okay. But you go north, it's monstrous. They're worrying if they're going to have such winds and storms that they can't get the Macy's Parade going with the balloons uh, come Thursday. So that gets fun. If you watch the Patriots game last night, you saw one of the storms go through, but the market is in a downtrend, oversold, hasn't been able to reach down to a Bollinger Band bottom literally on this whole break, and that break came from just over the $3 level. So at least we know where the resistance is. What bothers me is the 100-day average doesn't even stop this market. You had one break where it respected it, then it just started whipping back and forth through it. So I wouldn't consider that super important just at this time. You can see the boards have cleared behind me, so everybody's getting ready to do things. You know, I hope you realize that I'm located at the Chicago Board of Trade. So my offices, my studio, everything's been right here, and that is the building behind me. And Linen Associates, obviously, I'm in their offices. We all big suite together here. We report on the markets and we do it with our seasoned pros for you. And the idea is to get you information, be it a Sunday night when other people typically aren't writing about it, we are, so that you can get it through our charting software, 
You can get it through an email. These are the categories that we write on. Take a good look at them. You pick the category you want and it comes out to you from there. Financials will include gold in the financial markets. How do you get a free trial to it? Well, the simplest way is to call us. People don't do that anymore. So what you can do is go to our website and on the front page, it'll say Iris free offer. You can click up here at any time. That'll take you to it as well if you're watching me on YouTube. I'm Ira Epstein. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.